rotate it. And you can add as many vehicles as you want for each team, as long as you keep the team indexes correct. Just remember, um, zero for red, one for blue. So now we have our vehicles added. We're going to add our um, net game flags around the map. So just first we're just going to save our scenario just in case we mess up. So go to our hierarchy view. And before we add our net game flags, which is where like your CTF flag would spawn, where the odd ball would spawn, or where your uh, racetrack would markers would show up in ra race mode, etc. First we need to add our CTF flag stand for to put our um, CTF flag on. It's just for show. It's not even necessary to put it down, but it makes it look nicer. So go to scenery, edit types, add, locate your scenery. And we're going to add a flag base, add flag base dot scenery. And then we're also going to put a barricade around it. So I'll click H barricade large, add tags, click done. Okay. Go back to game view. Now, let's fly over to the red base, which I think I put over here. Yeah, I put over here. Oh no, first before we add those, we're just going to add one more thing. So go to hierarchy view, then click um, scenery, click edit types, add, go to your scenery, and we're going to add our um, landing beacons, which is just to show which base is the red base and which is the blue base. And it's just to add a little more detail to our map to make it look nicer. And it's also easier for when populating your map so that you can keep track of which side is which. So we can add blue landing beacon for the blue base. And go to find landing beacon, which is really a land red landing beacon. So add that, click done. Okay. Now we're going to right click where you want to uh, go to the red base, first of all. Right click where you want the first uh, red landing beacon to be. So, right, um, change that to landing beacon. So, as you can see, we have a f uh, flashing red landing beacon right there. Let's get another one on the other side of the base. I'm going to fly over the blue base. Add where I want the first um, landing beacon to be. Now, we're just going to change the type to blue landing beacon. So now we have a blue flashing beacon right there. Is that another one on the other side of the base? Okay, so now we have our landing beacons on both sides. So it's a little bit easier to tell which side is which. Okay, so now we're going to add our flag stands. So right click where you want your flag stand to be on the red base. Let's change the type to flag base. As you can see, we have a nice flag base right there. Now, right click in front of it. I'm just going to make our change this type to barricade. Change the type to barricade. So then now we have a barricade right there. Let's rotate that so that's facing the right direction. So then we have a barricade and a flag right there. Now, I'll fly over the blue base. Right click where you want the flag base to be for the blue base. The property view. Change type to flag base. And click in front of it. Change it type to H barricade large. So now we have a barricade right there. Just gonna move that back a little bit. Okay, so now we have that set up. Just save your scenario again real quick. We're going to hierarchy view again. Just minimize objects and then click go to game data. Um, click net game flags. And now we're gonna add our net game flags around the map, which is not literally flags, but just the word they have for them. So we'll go over the red base and right click on the stand for the red base. I'm going to change, go to property view, and its default would already be CTF flag. 
So let's keep that since for the red base we keep its team index of zero. So you won't actually see the flag, but it'll spawn there in the game. So then go over to the blue base, right click on their stand, and then go to property view. I'm going to give it a team index of one since this is for the blue base. So then now we have those. Now we're going to add um, our oddballs, which are not like the um, CTF flags, which I will show you why. So right click where you want the oddball to be, which should be around the middle of the map. Go to property view, give us team index of zero, click oddball bodge, um, ball spawn. And the reason why this isn't the same as CTF is that the team index of zero for the oddball is not just for red, the red base, but for everybody. So now we have that, and that's where an oddball will spawn. Now right click again, somewhere near it, and change this team index to one. And this is going to be for multiple oddball games, where you can have more than one oddball in the game. And you can have up to five to ten of these oddballs with a uh, team index of one. So I'm just going to add five. So then we have an oddball team index of one, and then five of them with a team index of um, Oh no, we have one oddball with the team index of zero and five with the team index of one. Okay, so now we have our oddballs. We're going to add our racetrack. So fly over the red base. Right click where you want the first marker to be. And you can put the first marker anywhere, but we're just going to do it at the red base. And we change this type to race hyphen track. You give it a team index of zero. And each marker that you create has to have its own team index. So that's the first marker. Now put you want the second marker to be. So right click there. Give this team index a one since this is the next marker. Then put the second one. Give this a team index of two since it's the next one. And then finally another one right there. Give a team index of three. And you can add as many markers around the map as you want, but I'm only going to add four since this is a very small map. And there wouldn't be much point to having so many. Okay, so now we're also going to add our vehicle spawning area since the vehicles that we created here will not show up in the race setup game. So right click where you want the first vehicle to spawn. So right click, go to property view, and change this to race hyphen vehicle. And for the red base, we're going to give it a team index of zero. So you won't actually see the vehicle, but it will spawn there. And then put where you want the other one to be. And just rotate it the direction you want it to be facing when it starts off. Okay. Now we're going to fly over the blue base. Put where we want theirs to be. So right click. Property view. You have a team index of one since it's for the blue base. I'm going to put another one over here. And you can have whatever amount of vehicles you want to spawn for each base, but we're just going to put two for each base in this case. So with that done, now we're going to add our King of the Hill markers so that King will have, be able to run it um, King of the Hill setup. So just real quick, we're just going to save our scenario. Now where we're going to put the first King of the Hill thing set up, which should be around the middle. Just right click where you want the first one to be. Go to property view, change its to hill change its type to hill flag, give it a team index of zero. What we do is we actually create a ring of these markers. And this is where the ring will show up in CTF. And the bigger the ring here, the bigger it is in the game. And each ring has to have its own separate team index. So I'm just going to put one right there. Put another one right here except we're going to change the type to team index of one since it's the next one. So i got a ring right there. Now I'm going to put another one over here. Give this a team index of two. And for larger maps, you can even put a fourth ring with a team, which will have a team index of three. 
but this is just a smaller map, so we're only going to have three rings. So that's it for our net game flags. So I save your scenario again. Okay, so now we're going to add where we want our um, where we want Master Chief to spawn for each team. So I'll go to Hierarchy View and just minimize game data, and click Player Starting Points. Go back to Game View. Go over to the red base. Right click where you want um, the first spawn point to be. Go to Property View. And under type 0, change the type to all games. So that this he'll he'll spawn right there in all all game types. And then under team index keep it zero since it's for the red base. And you or you can have up to eight for each base, which would be a total of sixteen players for this entire map. So we're this is a small map, but we're still gonna add eight. So let's rotate those where you want them to be facing. And the light blue arrow is the direction you'll be facing. So there's eight right there for the red base. Go over to the blue base. Right click where you want the first one to be. Go to property view. And give it a team index of one since it's for the blue base. So I add eight of those. Rotate them. Now we're going to add where our uh, weapons are going to spawn in the game. So you can pick them up. So go to View, Hierarchy View. Then go to Game Data. And go to Net Game Equipment. And go back to Game View. Go over to the red base. Right click where you want the first weapon to be for the red base. Go to property view, type 0, all games, so it shows up in all game types. And since this is for the red base, we keep its team index of 0. Then uh, beside item collection, click those three little dots. Locate your tags. Go to item collections, single weapons. And you can add whatever kind of weapon you want, but I'm just going to do assault rifle, so open up that. Gonna put two right there. I'm gonna add two over here to the blue base. I'm gonna change team index to one since it's for the blue base. And you can add as many um, weapons around the map as you want, as long as you keep the team indexes correct. But I'm only gonna add two assault rifles for each base just to keep it simple. And now I'm just gonna add. Um, power-ups such as health packs, over shields, and invincibility. So I'm just going to add a health pack right here for the red base. So right click there and go to property view and hit team index, change its team index to zero since I'm doing the red base. Add in collection, click the three little dots. Locate your tags directory and go to item collections, power-ups, and change its type to wherever you want. I'm just going to do power-up health pack. So open up that. So then a health pack will spawn right there. Just gonna fly over to the blue base. Right click where I want theirs to be. Change team index to one. So then a health pack will spawn right there. And oh and I'm also gonna add some grenades for each base. So right click where I want the first grenade to be. Got a single weapons. Fragmentation grenades. Team X is zero since I'm doing the red base first. So I'm two fragmentation grenades right there, and I'm also going to add two plasma grenades. So I'm going to right click there, change type to plasma grenade. Put another one right there. I'm going to fly over to the blue base. Right click there. Give it Team X a one since it's for the blue base. Fragmentation grenade. Put another one right there. I'm also going to add plasma grenades over here too. So I'm just going to change it type to plasma grenade. Add another one right there. Okay, so now I'm going to save it. And I think that's it for compiling. So let me check here. Oh, we
but you can also add